In a previous video, I spent six months collecting ancient debris just so I could make a full netherite beacon in Minecraft. Why have I done this? Why... Why have I done this? Following that, I spent three whole days mining for diamonds so I could make the diamond beacon. Look at that. And in this video, I'm going to complete my collection by making a full iron, gold, and emerald beacon. Therefore, making one of every beacon in hardcore Minecraft. Now, I'll be honest, these beacons didn't require an insane amount of effort. But still, if you go on to enjoy today's video, do not forget to leave a like and also subscribe because we are getting closer and closer to 2 million subscribers. And also, don't forget to go back and watch the other two videos once you you're done here. G'day guys, my name is Wadzi and welcome back to Hardcore Minecraft. This is the next episode in the Beacon Saga and in this episode we're gonna finish off making the beacons. We made the netherite one, then we made the diamond one, and today we're gonna finish off by making the emerald, the gold, and the iron. But before we can do anything, there's one thing we have to do, and that's plant more melons. Right, Melanie? Yes. Right, and just like that, I've added our quota of 200 melons to the melon farm for today. If you want to see how big this melon farm ends up getting, make sure to subscribe. And with that, let's get into the rest of the episode. So as I've already mentioned, today we're going to be making three beacons instead of just one. And that means we're going to have to fight three withers in this video. But the problem is, I didn't have enough wither skeleton skulls to do that. So prior to starting this video, I went over to the nether and spent some time in my nether fortress looking for some wither skeletons. And I was going to need to find another eight skulls to bring our total up to nine so we would have have enough for this video. Well, I missed it when I got my first Wither Skeleton Skull, but we're back here hunting for Wither Skeletons. We're gonna have to find eight right now because we have one... Oh my god, that thing bounced higher. We have one left over back at home, and we're going to need three new beacons for this video, so... Oh, what the hell? <gasps> That's two. Three. Oh, God damn it. There we go, that's number four. So that's halfway. We need another four and then we can go home. Really? Come on, it's been so long since I've got one. Six and a half hours later. Oh, there we go, finally, number five. Oh, there's so many. Wait, what the hell are you doing down here? Come on, just drop the damn head. Oh my god. What the... This game is... What is this bug? Oh, finally, number six. Only two more to go. Oh, let's go! Number seven! That was fast. Okay, I'm happy. One more. One more just like that. Alright, we got a couple here. <gasps> there we go, number eight. We're done. So now we had the nine Wither Skeleton Skulls, we would need to fight three Withers throughout this video. But again, before we start making these beacons, there was still one more preparation I wanted to make. So to start off with this episode, what I'm actually going to be doing is building the additional platforms for the beacons we have left to make. So for example, how I made this extension for the Diamond Beacon, I'm going to make three more extensions for our Iron, Gold and Emerald Beacon. So yeah, let's get to work on that. Alright, so that is platform number one over there. That will be where we're going to put our emerald beacon. Now I'm going to do two more on this front side and the back side. And they're going to be at a lower level than those. As you can see, obviously the netherite beacon is going to be the highest. Then we got the diamond and the emerald. Then we're, on a lower level, we're going to have the gold and the iron because they're a bit less impressive. All right, and I think that's how low I'm going to put the gold in the iron beacon because I don't want them to get too in the way of, you know, our pride and joy. I was considering maybe putting it one layer higher. I think I'm happy with it being there. I'm starting to realize making this iron beacon or this platform for the iron beacon might be a little bit of an issue.
All right, well, I guess that's all we have to do for the iron beacon, but uh, that is disgustingly ugly. So what I'm gonna do is try and terraform the land and make it look natural. All right, I think that looks a lot better. All right, all right. Now that we've got all that finished, it's time to actually make some beacons. But spoiler alert, this is going to be really easy. All right, so starting off with the easiest beacon first, we're going to be making our iron beacon. And the funny thing about the iron beacon is, with the whole process of getting a netherite beacon, I spent so much time AFKing all the way up there. That way I would be getting gunpowder from my uh, gunpowder farm. But, uh, you know, our iron farm is right next door, so the whole time we were AFKing for gunpowder, we, we were also getting iron. What? And we have a fair, a fair bit of iron. So there's literally no need for me to go get more. We have enough iron here to make a hundred beacons. But there was still one thing we needed to do before we could make this first beacon. And uh, this is gonna be the first wither battle for this, for this episode. Oh, come on, I got withered straight away. I'm getting worse and worse at these wither battles, man. I am now crafting yet another beacon. Now let's just grab some of the many, many thousands of iron blocks I have. And let's go put this iron beacon down. One layer, two layers, three and four layers. And that is our first beacon of this video, the iron beacon. All right, so now we have the netherite beacon, the diamond beacon, and the iron beacon. Next up, I think, is going to be gold. The thing with the gold beacon is we already have enough gold to make that one as well. It's scattered all over the place, but if I run around and collect all the gold that I have... So as you can see right here, we have more than enough gold. If you've been paying attention, you'd realize not only in the first project where I made a netherite beacon was I able to collect quite a lot of gold in the nether, but also in the last video while I was strip mining for diamonds, I ran into quite a lot of gold as well. So again, we already had all the resources we needed to make this beacon, but that's really boring. So what I thought might be kind of cool is if we raided an ocean monument first for a couple more gold blocks before we can make the golden beacon. So uh, yeah, here, here's our thing. Let's take it on. Wait, where's the entrance? Get me in this sucker. Wait, I can just loot the gold now. Does this count? Did I just win? I didn't even get mining fatigue. I could technically just leave right now. I've already won. All right, nah, come on. We got to kill some big fishes first. Oh, hello. There's one. Die. Uh oh, uh oh, need some air. There we go, that's one. Alright, we got two more of these things to kill. Alright, now let's go. Let's drink a water breathing potion just to make our lives easier. I get so lost in these things. Oh, hello. Hello. There's the big boy. That's two down. We have one more to go. Oh, it's the last one. Oh. There it is. We've conquered another ocean monument. So now that we had completed that little side mission, I guess it's time to make the beacon, but not until we had done yet another wither battle. Yeah, this has been a clean battle. We're going down, wither. We're going down. And now to craft our second beacon for this episode, time to make this golden beacon. We're just, we're so damn rich. And there we go. Our fourth beacon in this world, the golden beacon. Beautiful. And this just leaves one more beacon for us to complete. We've now added the iron, we've added the gold. Now it's time to finish the emerald beacon, which is going to be the hardest beacon for this video. 
Alright, finally, a beacon which is actually going to require some work. But don't be fooled, this is still going to be pretty easy. So to finish the full emerald beacon, we're going to need 1,476 emeralds. And lucky for us, we've got a bit of a head start. Six and a half stacks, which is a fair head start. So here's the plan. The easiest way to get emeralds is obviously by trading with villagers. And we've got a lot of those. So I'm simply going to use a variety of trades and see what works and you'll be surprised just how quickly you can make an emerald beacon if you really put your mind to it. All right, so why not? Trade number one, let's do some carrots. Let's see how many emeralds we can get from this carrot farm. All right, we need to find farmers that take carrot, carrot deals. Hey, this guy looks good. All right, so we're done with the carrot trading and we managed to get another 40 emeralds just like that. That quick, that easy. So let's put those away and now let's move on to maybe a different trade. Staying on theme of trading with farmers, I think what might be cool is if we put our melon farm to good use and actually trade melons for emeralds. And nobody's ever done that before, right guys? And yes, I know I should be using silk touch for this, but I just don't have a silk touch axe, so... Alright, so I've harvested almost half a shulker box of melons. I would go for more, but I thought, let's just see how far that gets us. We don't even have too many farmers that have the melon trade, so we're gonna have to try and level up a few of these guys first to see if we can get them to have it. Hey, there we go, that's a brand new one. Where are they? The biggest problem here is I have no idea which villages I can trade trade melons with oh okay this should be one. Oh, this guy should be one for sure oh i just traded with you maybe you hey there we go hey that's another one all right well from that trading session we managed to get another 85 emeralds so we're close to nine stacks in total of emeralds now the melon trade would work better if we had more farmers that were leveled up to the melon trade that's kind of our only issue at the moment but it's gonna take too much effort probably to level up all the farmers so for now i think i'm gonna leave the melon trade and let's move on to the next trade so while i was doing a bunch of strip mining for my diamond beacon i found a bunch of coal so i figured i could use this to trade for emeralds but as well as that we still have a bunch of iron which we could use as well all right so starting off with the coal trade hey there we go Wait, where's our armorers? We have barely any armorers in here. Well, I'm noticing just how few armorers we have in here. Well, of coal alone, we just got 100 emeralds and we used barely any of the coal we brought. Uh, now let's try and use some iron on these guys. I don't think many of them have the iron trade. That's kind of the only issue we have. Coal and iron was by far the easiest trade for us to exploit and get a ton of emeralds fast. The only issue I was running into was there wasn't enough villages with the coal and iron trade. So I went ahead and created a bunch more toolsmiths and from here, I might have gotten a little carried away. All right, so now that we've added a bunch of new uh, toolsmiths around the place, if you level them up to level two, they're guaranteed to give you the iron trade. And I'm thinking it might be worthwhile leveling them up, even if we have to spend a few emeralds, because then we can just make a bunch more emeralds back. Let's just, let's just give it a try. How many emeralds do we have to spend to level these guys up? 10 emeralds, but then they level up and you get iron trade and instantly get your emeralds back with this method we've already got what this is like 200 emeralds bring us now to probably about 50 percent of the way there to an emerald beacon but it gets better i spent literally only five more minutes running around in circles trading iron for emeralds with these villages and by the end of it this is how many more emeralds we had found i mean that's another 200 emeralds just like that uh, all right, this is kind of stupid. It's been like not even five minutes since the last clip. We have 325 emeralds. That it's uh, it's ridiculous. Hang on, let me do the math on this. We have 21 stacks. I think you only need 23 for a beacon. Okay, so we went a little overboard with the iron and coal trades, but that was fine. I only needed just over 100 more emeralds to have enough for the full emerald beacon. So I decided to finish it all off with my personal favorite, stick trading. After cutting down a few trees, turning all the wood into sticks and trading it into emeralds, it was only a few moments later and we had done it. This should be the last emerald we need to have enough emeralds to make the emerald beacon. 
Of course, the only thing left for us to do was one more wither fight. <laughs> All right, here we go. Crafting the final beacon that we need. And now it's time to craft our 1,476 emeralds all into blocks. That's one stack, that's two stacks, and that's the rest. 164 blocks of emerald. This is actually it. This is the last beacon we need to complete one of every single beacon you can in Minecraft. Definitely not the most impressive beacon, but it's still pretty cool. A full emerald beacon. All right. There it is. And the final block to place and our beacon collection will be officially finished. There it is, the emerald beacon done. So now we have the iron beacon, the gold beacon, the emerald beacon, the diamond beacon, and most importantly, the netherite beacon. And that is one of every beacon in hardcore Minecraft. You know, just, just a subtle flex. Cheers. Look, if you haven't seen the previous two videos in this beacon series, I highly recommend you check those out now. They are much more impressive than this one. But also thank you so much for watching and thanks to all the new people subscribing to the channel. Hopefully soon we can reach 2 million subscribers.